Good evening. Good evening. We do welcome you to worship tonight on Holy Thursday or Monday Thursday. We hope that tomorrow evening you will be in the exact same seats that you are in as we have our Good Friday worship tomorrow night at 7 o'clock and also at the noon hour. So please continue to journey with us through all the services of Holy Week. Just a reminder, Easter Sunday will kick off with an Easter breakfast beginning at 7.45 through the 11 o'clock hour, an egg hunt at 10 o'clock, and worship at 8.30 and 11 as we experience the joy of the resurrection. At this time, uh, just a reminder tonight as we have the stripping of our altar, we do ask that you depart in silence tonight in recognition of the somber nature of this night. We invite you to please rise for the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sins to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join us in hymn 358, Great God, Your Love Has Called Us. Thank you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's most holy word. The first reading comes from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its heads, legs, and inner organs. You shall not let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me no wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide 
hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Hear now words of good news, grace, and power. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you as an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, 
nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. On this holy night, the beginning of the great three days, we invite you to take just a few moments of silence for your own private prayer, reflection, and meditation. <clears throat> May God bless the proclamation of God's word in this and in every temple around the world this night. Amen. Have you ever been driving in the car, perhaps alone or with someone else, maybe children, and you or someone else speaks <clears throat> this phrase, are we there yet? <laughs> it's a question that evokes feelings of impatience and anticipation a desire for control, a desire for movement towards some goal or some destination. Are we there yet? Look at your neighbor and say, are we there yet? <laughs> In the Christian church, we are moving toward a destination. This past Sunday, with our observance of Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday, we entered into Holy Week, the last week of Jesus' earthly life. And as we have progressed through this week, we come to Holy Thursday or Monday Thursday. And tonight, we enter into a period that is often called the Great Three Days. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. And tonight, we might be tempted to skip over the events that are about to come. Impatient toward looking forward to the joy of the resurrection on Easter Sunday. Kind of asking ourselves, can we just bypass all this? Are, are, are we there yet? Why is it that we as people, even Christian people who are allegedly at least rooted in the things of faith, want to bypass some of the realities of this night. Betrayal, denial, saying goodbye in the form of a last supper, the stripping and the taking away of our Savior, the Savior of the world. We want to skip the hard stuff. We want to skip facing death on Good Friday. And we just want to head to what feels good on Easter Sunday. Are we there yet? On our altar, you will see some cups, a chalice, prepared for our celebration of Holy Communion, one of the sacraments in the Lutheran Church. And although much more than just a symbol or a sign for us as Lutherans, it still reminds us of the food and the refreshment that is waiting for us in the sacrifice of our Lord's body and blood. As we take the journey toward the resurrection, both during Holy Week and every day of the Christian life, we nourish ourselves 
God nourishes us with the gift of renewal and forgiveness that for us is found only in the sacrifice of Jesus. Tonight is not only about being refreshed and about receiving gifts in the body and blood of Christ. It is also about becoming what we eat. To share in the, in the ministry and the mission of the one we feast upon. You've heard that expression, you are what you eat, right? Look at your neighbor and say, you are what you eat. <laughs> as we feast upon Christ, as we take the real presence of Jesus in with and under the bread and the wine, we not only receive gifts of forgiveness, eternal life, salvation, and redemption, but we are to become those gifts that we receive into the world. Another part of tonight is the service, the humble service that Jesus showed in his act of foot washing. If I then, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Years ago, while serving parishes in Pennsylvania, Youth ministry was a significant part of my pastoral role within congregations. And in most of those congregations, we would do a yearly mission trip with our youth groups. We would leave our comfortable homes in Pennsylvania, and we would go out and we would serve and do domestic mission work in places like Niagara Falls, New York, the Navajo Indian Reservation in Arizona, and a little closer to us in Georgia, North Carolina. And on most of those service-related trips, we would close the week with a powerful foot-washing service. Now, truth be told, washing the feet of teenagers and adults who had spent the week sweating and playing and working and, well, just being teenagers wasn't particularly glamorous or sweet-smelling work. But as the words of Jesus concerning service were read, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, were read, and then literally acted out. The power of these holy moments were indescribable with words. Through prayer, service, scripture, and foot washing, the participants, youth and adults, and this pastor included, were brought to tears as the Holy Spirit worked in these moments. Have you ever participated in a foot washing service? It was so powerful that we decided to literally do it one Monday, Thursday, in the first parish that I served. And what we offered it, the other pastor and I initially thought, well, just a few people are going to come forward. But much to our surprise, myself and the other pastor ended up washing something like 200 feet that night. And most of the people there had two feet, so it was 400 feet. <laughs> acts of service and acts of humility can be very powerful, very spiritual. And of course, very biblical. We become what we eat this day. That is the call to Christian discipleship. This is core, not only to biblical teaching, but also to our amazing Lutheran theology. Martin Luther, the great church reformer that we Lutherans make a big deal about, believed and taught that Christians should imitate Jesus and their service to their neighbors. In fact, Martin Luther compared true Christians to little Christs acting out of love and service to the world. If I then, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. We come to worship on this Holy Thursday, this Monday Thursday, to worship the Christ who have first come to us. We come to worship on this Holy Thursday, remembering Jesus in the upper room with his disciples on this, the night in which he was betrayed. 
We come to worship, to feast, to receive, to hear words of forgiveness and restoration. We come to take into our very bodies the real presence of Jesus in, with, and under the bread and the wine. And even though we come to receive, to be filled up, we are also called to go and to give it away, to empty ourselves. You know that forgiveness that we're about to receive? We're called to then go and give that forgiveness to others, even when they don't deserve it. You know that compassion that we receive? We are then called to go and be kind, compassionate to others, even when doing so is very hard. We become what we eat. We become a little Christ. We are filled up in order to empty ourselves to and for the world around us. Jesus says, this is my body. Jesus says, this is my blood. It is given and it is shed for you. Look at your neighbor and say, for you. But also, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Gifts, service, betrayal, the stripping away of the Son of God, unconditional love, and undeserved forgiveness. This is Holy Thursday. In Jesus' name. Please rise and sing hymn number 359. <laughs> who gave his life for the world. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, who kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world during this holy week. Humble the powerful and lift up any who are marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service and love to our neighbors. Merciful God, 
God who blesses the grain of the soil and the fruit of the vine, inspire in us a reverent care for the earth. Sustain fields, gardens, and wild places that all people are fed and every living thing flourishes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, whose greatest commandment is love, guide all who govern by the principle of love. Transform unjust human systems that oppress some for the gain of others. Restore communities as places of justice and concern for those who are vulnerable. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who was betrayed, comfort people everywhere who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone they knew and trusted. Heal the bodies, minds, and hearts of victims of exploitation. Help all in pain to know that you are near. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who sits at the table with us, grant the joy of your presence to all who share the meal. Strengthen communities of faith and grace and courage, especially our brothers and sisters in Guatemala. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who brings new life out of death, we pray with thanks for the lives of those who have joined the communion of saints. And our holy meal, connect us to the faithful who have gone before us and nourish us as your people living today. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, loving God, for the sake of the one who loved us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other Christ's peace. We invite you to rise. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but also with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. As we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord. And unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food. The body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This communion table is open to all. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We invite the congregation to be seated as we partake in the stripping of the altar. Our lights will be dimmed uh, throughout this experience. And once again, we invite you to leave this holy place in silence tonight. Oh, Lord, my God, my Savior, by day and night I cry to you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Incline your ear to my lamentation. For I am full of trouble. My life is at the brink of the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I have become like one who has no strength. Lost among the dead like the slain who lie in the grave. Whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the depths of the pit in dark places and in the abyss. Your anger weighs upon me heavily, and all your great waves overwhelm me. You have put my friends far from me. You have made me to be abhorred by them. I am in prison and cannot get free. My sight has failed me because of trouble. Lord, I have called upon you daily. I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will those who have died stand up and give you thanks? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave? Your faithfulness in the land of destruction. Will your wonders be known in the dark? Or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten? But as for me, O oh Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? Ever since my youth, I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors and am helpless. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They surround me all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor you have put away from me. And darkness is my only companion. 